In this video, we are going to create a sword and go through a sword workflow in Blender. We are going to use this reference image, which is of a Knight Templar sword from the Crusades. We are going to cover everything from the creation of the mesh to the materials and even the smaller details like the cross here. Even if you are creating a similar but different type of sword, I encourage you to follow along as this tutorial will help you create any kind of common European sword like this one. And just a quick note, I'm using Blender version 2.91 for this video. Now before I start working on something, I like to understand the anatomy of what I'm creating. So when it comes to swords, at least most type of swords, they are broken out like this. And this is useful to know because we are going to be naming these separate pieces accordingly in Blender. So this is the anatomy of a common European sword. You have the pommel, the grip, the cross guard and the blade. Now the blade is actually made up of various different anatomical pieces but we are lumping this all under the term blade because we are going to build the blade as one piece in Blender. And that's what's going to happen with everything here. In Blender we are going to have four separate meshes comprise these different parts of the sword. Right, let's begin. So I'm going to start with a pommel and then work my way down. So first of all, let's click A to select everything and then delete. Now let's create a circle and under the add circle menu at the bottom here, change the vertices count to eight. Now let's rotate that on the x-axis by 90 degrees by doing uh, R for rotation, X to lock it to the x-axis and then 9, 0. Now let's move it up a bit. And now we're going to extrude it on the y-axis by 0 0.25. So I'm going to go into edit mode and then clicking A to select everything. E to extrude, Y to lock it on the Y axis, and then we're just going to bring it out by 0 0.25. So we only want to fill in the front face here for now, as we're going to be mirroring the back part of the pommel later on. So let's just Alt click one of the lines at the front here to select the entire. Um, section and then click F to fill it. Coming back into object mode we just need to rotate this pommel on the y-axis a bit so that we have a flat edge facing downwards. So I'm going to go into a front orthographic view by clicking number one on the number pad and then rotating on the y-axis and let's do minus 22.5 there we go. Now, if we zoom in to our reference image up here, you will see that the pommel has a bit of a ridge um, at the ends here, which also bevels in a bit. So let's recreate that. With face select mode active, and we need to make sure we're back into edit mode and face select up here. With the front face selected, click the I key to begin in setting, and then type 0 0.1. Now let's extrude the middle face by clicking E, and then minus 0 0.05 to bring it in by that number. Now let's add a slight bevel. Select these innermost edges here, so we're going to go into edge select mode, and then with our mouse over one of these lines here, we're just going to alt click so it selects the entirety of that. And then control and B to begin beveling. And we just want to give it a very slight bevel, something like that. Now we're going to add the cross decal. So, coming back into object mode, let's create a cube. Just going to move it to the side and then scale it in. And then scale on the y axis a little bit and then on the z axis. So, you, so that you've got something like that. And I'm just going to move this down a bit more. 
Now we're going to create a mirror modifier. And we're going to choose the z-axis. Uh, nothing's going to appear because we need to apply our transform. So with the uh, cube selected, come to Object, Apply, All Transforms. And then we want to make sure Merge is turned on and just adjust the merge until they both link. There we go. Now we're going to go into Edit Mode and we're going to create a loop cut and move it up to the top here, about there. Now, in face select mode, we're going to select the faces on the side here, and we're going to extrude them individually. So we're just going to right click, and then come to extrude individual faces. And then bring them out to about here. And because this is mirrored, you can see it's happening down here as well. So you're probably wondering how we're going to turn this into the cross. So first of all, we're going to go back into object mode and we're going to apply a subdivision surface modifier. And we're going to set the levels viewport to 2. We still want to preserve the rectangular look of the in the middle here. So let's add some loop cuts. Add one there and then one there. There we go. So before we start editing this, let's just go on to proportional editing mode, or you can turn it on with the O hotkey. And then we're gonna create a loop cut in the middle here. Take this line at the top, front orthographic view by the number one on the number pad, and then just move it down a little bit. I'm just going to use my mouse wheel to shrink the proportional editing circle, just so it goes down a little bit like that. And we can add more loop cuts to give us a bit more control. So let's grab these lines here and bring that up a bit more. So we've got something like that. And then what we want to do is add some more loop cuts over here and, and just until we start to get the shape uh, of the cross we want. Now this isn't going to be completely accurate, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to get through this uh, as quick as I can. So there we go, quite a poor attempt, but uh, this will do for now, um, as I'm just trying to show you the general workflow and concept here. Um, if I spend a bit more time on this, then I can make it a bit more accurate, uh, but yeah, it will do for now. Right, so now let's apply our modifiers. We're just gonna come to the arrows here, and then click Apply. Now with the modifiers applied, we wanna duplicate this shape so that we can start to form the cross. Uh, before we do this, let's just set our origin point to the geometry. So with the object selected, come to Object, Set Origin, and Origin to Geometry. And now, Control c and Control v and then rotate on the y-axis by 90 degrees. Now, we're just going to fix these overlapping faces here. And by doing that, I'm just going to select the duplicated mesh and we're just going to move it forward on the y-axis very, very slightly. Uh, just not too much. Something like that, that would do. Uh, and now we're going to use a Boolean modifier. So select one of the shapes, apply a Boolean modifier, and we want to apply it 
to this cube here, so cube 0 0.001. So with the object, cube 0 0.001, we're going to select Union and then Apply. And now let's move this away, let's delete what was left behind. And now we've got our cross as one mesh. And at the same time, because of the Boolean modifier, it's removed any overlapping geometry we might have had here. So it goes into itself uh, seamlessly. Now before we move this onto our pommel, let's just tidy up a few things first and optimize the topology. First, let's go into top orthographic view and delete the back side of our cross here as these are unnecessary vertices that won't be visible on our finished model. So I'm going to go to edit mode and then click the Z key and select wireframe mode. And then with face select mode on, click B to open up a selection box and then left click drag over the middle here. Delete vertices. Hold down the Z key and go back to solid. And there we go, we've just taken out half of the cross. Another thing you may want to do is reduce the poly count if you wanted to use this model in a game, for example. A quick way to do this is to click A to select everything then click X and then you can do a limited dissolve which will drastically reduce the poly count whilst retaining the general shape of the model. The only downside is, to this is that it does make the topology messy so it'll be harder to make further edits so make sure you back up your work. Right now let's move this into the middle of our pommel so that it intersects just a little bit. So I'm going to scale it down, move it across We just want a little bit of intersection. There we go. Front orthographic view. Right, and let's just get this flush in the middle. That will do. We also want this to show on the back too, so we can easily do this using a mirror modifier. But before we do that, let's just join the cross with the pommel by selecting the cross, and then shift click in the pommel, and then control and J to join them. Let's also move our pommel forward a little bit, as when we do the uh, mirror modifier, it's gonna take these axes uh, line divisions into account. Right, let's create a mirror modifier on the Y axis. Just gonna move it forward a little bit more. Um, object, apply, all transforms. There you go. And then just turn up the merge value until they uh, merge. And then just apply the modifier once you're happy. So currently the model looks very sharp on the edges here. So let's apply some smoothing and beveling. Right, let's first right click our model and select Shade Smooth. It's going to look odd, but don't worry. Now come over to the Object Data Properties here and select Auto Smooth under the Normals tab. And let's make it 80 degrees. So it's just smoothed out the entire model. And now what I'm gonna do is with Edge Select mode, we're just gonna grab these edges around the model and make sure you're shift left clicking. And then do control and B to give it a very slight bevel. There we go. You may also want to get rid of this uh, line that's going around the middle um, or you could alt click it and if you wanted to you could scale it up and give the pommel a bit more of a rounded look. But for this video, I'm just going to get rid of it. So with the line selected, click X and then dissolve edges. There we go. Right, let's move our pommel right up as we're gonna be working our way down. So the next part is the grip. So as you can see from our reference image, the grip is quite rounded and gets larger as it goes down towards the cross guard. 
It also has all this separation going on. I'm going to make a slightly different version of this as I want to show off the screw modifier and show how useful it can be when making uh, sword grips. Right, so let's create a cylinder and then move this up and scale it down to line up with our pommel. We also need to make sure that this part of the grip completely lines up with the bottom of the pommel here. There we go. And I'm also just going to move this down a bit more. Now we want to make five loop cuts. Control and R while in edit mode, and then one, two, three, four, five with the mouse wheel. Left click and then right click to confirm the selection. We are basically going to use these loop cuts to scale the mesh in places to match the shape of the grip in our reference image. So let's do that now. I'm going to go number one on the number pad. I'm just going to select these bottom edges first. Make sure um, proportional editing mode is on. Just going to scale it up. And you can basically just play around with the scaling using this. I'm also going to scale it in on the Y axis so we haven't got as much of a ridge showing it at the ends here. And then with face select mode, we can bring this down a bit more. That'll do for now. Now we want to start putting the detail and seams onto our grip. So to do this, we're going to use the screw modifier. Let's create a plane, move it up to the side, and then rotate on the x-axis by 90 degrees. Go into edit mode, and then in vert vertex select mode, Select these two vertices at the end here and delete the vertices. So we've just got these two vertices here. Now with the plane still selected, assign a screw modifier to it. Axes object, select cylinder. And now what we can do is adjust the screw amount and the iterations to get this conforming. Uh, let's also go to Object, Apply, and All Transforms, and then just scale this down so we can start getting this around our grip a bit better. And let's just turn the iterations up. I'm also going to increase the angle a bit more, just so um, we get smaller seams in the middle here. And if it looks like it's getting a bit sharp on the edges, increase the steps viewport. Also, just to make this conform a bit better, we're now going to apply a shrink wrap modifier and then target it to the cylinder. And then we're just going to offset it a little bit. And then make sure you select outside surface. Let's turn the iteration up again. And 
And you can just keep playing around with this until you get the result that you want. Again, for the sake of the video, I'm just going to keep it like that. So that will do for our grip. Let's apply those modifiers. And now let's move on to the cross guard. So let's start off by creating a circle. And then we can set the vertice count here back to 32. Move it up and then rotate on the x-axis by 90 degrees. Front orthographic mode. And what we're going to do is in edit mode and in vertex select mode, we're just going to take up the bottom half and then the next three vertices up. So we're left with something like that. And I'm just going to scale this out a bit more. Now let's extrude this on the Y axis a bit. And then move this to line up a bit better. We also need to extrude this downwards. So in edit mode, uh, face select mode, let's just grab these and extrude down on the Z axis. I'm just gonna line it up a bit more on the Y axis. Just so we've got a little bit of a ridge at the ends here. That will do. Now let's morph it around at the ends here. Uh, as if we go back to our reference image, you'll see that the cross guard is a bit wider on the ends. So let's just morph it around a bit more. So I'm just going to select these edges, uh, bring them down a bit more. Bring this up. Again, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but something like that will do. We also want to rotate the edges so they go with the flow of the shape. So I'm just going to do face select on each end. Uh, rotate. I'm going to turn off proportional editing mode. So we'll just rotate this down a bit more. And we'll do the same with this end. And then just to make these edges a bit smoother, let's just grab them, move them down a little bit. And if it all looks a bit sharp on the edges, then you can select these edges here. And then just bevel them out a bit. Just using the mouse wheel as well to give it a bit more of a bevel. We could do the same with the bottom here. And again, the corners look a bit sharp as well, so let's apply a bevel to them. Control B, and there we go. So there you go, not the best effort, but at least you're kind of understanding how this is piecing together. So on our reference image, you will notice that the cross guard also has the cross decals here. 
Well, we can replicate what we already made on the pommel to the cross guard. If you come back up to the pommel and select it, and then go into edit mode, you'll notice that the cross is of a course joined with the pommel. So the question is, how do we get the cross out of this? We could just select each individual face, but that would take too long. Well, luckily, even if the cross is joined with the pommel, it is still a separate mesh. Therefore, if you hover your mouse cursor over it and then press L, it will automatically select everything connected to the face you had your mouse cursor over. Now, if we click Shift D, you see it's duplicated our selection. So I'm going to right click to confirm it and I'm just going to move it off to the side so we can see it a bit better. And then I'm going to click P and then selection. So it's now a separate mesh entirely. Now let's move it down and add it to our cross guard. You may also want to uh, set the origin to geometry as well so you can use the transforms a bit more accurately on this. And I'm going to rotate it on the Y axis just to help it conform to the shape. And if you want to be able to move this around a bit more easily, remember that when you're using the transforms you can click the button twice to go into local transforms. So for example, if I'm moving on the z-axis, it's using the global z-axis. If I click z again, it's going to use the local z-axis of the mesh. So this will help us get it aligned a bit more accurately. There we go. And now we can just duplicate this with the mirror modifier. But just remember to apply the transforms. And I think we can rotate this a little bit more actually. It's a little bit inaccurate, so let's just conform it a bit better. That will do for now. And now let's apply our mirror modifier and then shift click the cross guard with the crosses active as well and then control J to join them. Right, and that's done. If you get any weird shading issues like this, uh, don't worry about that for now. And while I remember, let's also shade smooth our grip and then turn on auto smooth for that. And we'll do the same with our cross guard, and you can see it fixes the shading issue. Right, now let's move on to the blade. So we're going to create a cube and move it up into the cross guard. We're going to scale it down. So scale down the y axis a little bit. And we just want to make sure that the blade has the same width as the grip. And then I'm just going to grab the bottom face here and move that down. And let's click A to select everything and move this all up. Now with the blade selected, in edit mode, let's create 12 loop cuts. So using the mouse wheel, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Left click and then right click. And then we're going to select the bottom face here and turn on proportional editing mode. And then we're just going to scale the whole blade just using this face. Don't worry if it comes out of the cross guard, we'll modify that in a moment. And 
just going to keep using proportional editing mode, left clicking to confirm changes and then just going straight back into it. Just making the proportional editing circle smaller every time. Let's also delete the back faces of the sword for now. Um, as we're going to be replicating uh, the details on the front to the back later. I'm just going to move the sword out of the way for now, going to top orthographic view, edit mode, hold down Z, going to wireframe. We're going to add a loop cut in the middle. And what we're going to do is we're just going to delete everything on this side. Delete the faces, delete these faces as well. There you go. So we've literally got um, a halved blade. Hold on Z and go back into solid mode. And we're going to move that back in. Right, now let's create the bevel in the middle of the blade, which is this part here. So this is called the fuller. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, but that's this slot that goes through the middle here. So on our blade, in edit mode, let's create two loop cuts in the middle. And then we're going to select all of the middle faces, but we're only going to go down a certain length, maybe to about here, because the faller does not extend down the entirety of the blade. And now we're going to extrude this backwards by 0 0.04. Uh, Okay, if it goes outwards, let's undo that. Let's try minus 0 0.04, there we go. Now let's create the point at the bottom of the fuller. So create three loop cuts, vertex select mode, select these middle two vertices at the bottom here, and then just start moving that down with a small proportional editing circle. Something like that. And now we want to select the edges uh, of our fuller. And then Control B to bevel them. There we go. Let's do the mirroring now. We're going to move the blade out a bit more on the Y axis. Create a mirror modifier on the Y axis. Object, apply, all transforms. Uh, let's just move the blade back a little bit more. Object, apply, all transforms. Uh, I think we could do it even more. Back a bit. Object, apply, all transforms. Uh, and then let's turn the merging value up until they connect. We basically want to keep doing the merge until this bottom part looks uh, correct. Uh, something like a point like that. That would do. Let's assign the mirror modifier. We now need to make the edges of the blade look sharper. So let's first do the most obvious thing, which is scaling it on the Y axis. And now what we can do is alt click this edge around the side and then just scale it out on the X axis. If we go into a side view, yeah, I think that looks all right. Now let's move it out with smooth shading. Click on the object. Shade smooth. Then turn on auto smooth. And then let's set a value of something like 80 degrees. And again, we just want to make sure our blade matches the width of the grip. So let's just scale it on the x-axis a bit more. About like that. There we go. Sword is starting to come along. 
So now would be a good time to start naming all of our meshes so it's easy to navigate the scene collection. So let's first just call the entire collection sword. And now let's start going through objects. So what was this circle? So this was the pommel. So we'll name this pommel. This object here, that was the cross guard. So we'll call that cross guard. Uh, oops. This was the blade. That was the uh, grip uh, base, I'll call that. And the plane was the screw modifier, so we'll just call that grip. Uh, we can just call that grip screw. So with the sword created, we are now going to start assigning materials. If I was creating this sword as a project of mine, I would use programs like Substance Painter and Substance Designer to create and assign my materials. But this video is all about Blender, so we will keep the material creation within Blender. Same as before with the mesh creation, let's start from the top and work our way down. First, let's UV unwrap all of our meshes by selecting them all with A, then go into edit mode, select A again to select everything, U, and then do Smart UV Project. If we come over to the UV Editing tab, you will see that it's assigned our UV islands uh, all nice and uniform with the UV space. So that's going to really help our texturing. Now let's go to the shading area of Blender. So the pommel and the cross guard are gold, but the crosses are a darkish red colour. So let's select the pommel first and create a new material. And we're just going to call this pommel and cross guard. Now we're going to bring in our texture by dragging the file into the node editor. I've put the texture files that I'm using in the description of this video, but you're more than welcome to use your own textures or any other textures you find online. So for pretty much all the materials on this sword, I'm going to be using a seamless metal texture, and you'll see how I uh, customize it to fit different parts of the sword. So if I was to connect this now, you see it's all just gone gray, and it doesn't look very good. We're going to do a bit more to this. So first of all, let's make it a bit more metallic. In the node editor here, Shift and A. In the search, look for glossy BSDF and place that. And then we want to make another node called Mix Shader. And just place it over this line and it will automatically connect them. And then connect this shader to the glossy BSDF. You can see it's got a bit of gloss to it now. It's going to look a little bit better. Uh, we also need to make this gold. So back here, let's create another node called Mix RGB. This one. Place it over the line. And then for color two, let's just make it a bit more gold. And then we can bring this factor up to make the second color a bit more dominant over the first one. But we don't want to make it too dominant because then we lose the details of our texture map. We can also customize the gloss a bit. I'm also going to turn up the metallic value just a little bit. There we go. Now, of course, this setup has also made the cross gold too. So how do we separate these out as two different materials? If you recall, before I said that we could select the cross separately from the pommel by hovering our mouse over it in edit mode and pressing L. Let's do this and now create another material over here, plus, new, 
and then double click here, we're just going to rename this to cross and then click assign and make sure you do this for the back as well so L assign and we now want to give this a dark reddish color we can actually copy the setup we made before and just, just modify it so select everything just here we don't need the material output control C comes to the cross delete the principal BSDF control V and then connect this up to the material output. And now what we can do for color two here, we can just change this to red. And we can customize things a little bit further uh, to get a color we want. Right, now let's assign our gold material to the cross guard here as well. So let's select the pommel and cross guard material. And if you hover over this icon here, hold down the Alt key, hold down the left mouse button on it, and then you can drag it onto the mesh. So let's drag it onto our cross guard. And the same thing as we did before with the cross, we're going to go into edit mode and then just select these with L. going to create a new material on this mesh but we're just going to go into the search and then select cross and then assign there you go let's work our way back up and do the grip next let's create a new material we'll call it grip and we're going to assign our lever texture to it And I'm just going to do the same with the back as well. So with the grip base selected, just come to the search and then put grip. And that will do, to be honest. And now lastly, we come down to the blade. We are going to use the same node setup as the pommel. I'm just going to select the cross guard, come to pommel and cross guard, and we're going to copy all this, control C, come to the blade. Let's create a new material, call it blade and spell it correctly. Delete the principal BSDF, control V, and then connect it. I'm gonna change the color to, to be a bit more of a grayish color. And I'm actually going to make this a bit more glossy. So we can turn down the roughness here on the glossy BSDF. And there we go. Now, with all that done, we have our sword model all made in Blender. So this was a quick and easy little project for us to make a basic sword. But of course, you could take this much further and create all kinds of different swords and weapons. With a bit more time devoted to this project, you could make something a lot more detailed. But at least now you have the understanding of a sword workflow. The textures we have used are quite low resolution, but you could make your own textures using programs like Adobe Photoshop or Substance Designer and make higher resolution textures there. Or you can purchase your, uh, textures and materials from various 3D marketplaces online. Like I said earlier, I always like making my materials in Substance Designer, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we have kept everything solely in Blender. Anyway, Thank you all for watching, and I hope this has helped.